Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, today's video is going to be about alternate picking, which is probably the most universal way uh, to play the guitar. As a matter of fact, unless you have no technique at all that you prefer, you will be usually using this technique. Now the reason that, I mean, the, the, the fact that it's one of the most common ones is also the reason why a lot of us don't take time to really develop it. And one thing that has to be said about all techniques is that a technique is just one of the tools. So you learn it and you perfect it and then you don't really have to use it. You know, the, the reason we want proficiency, uh, you know, with all techniques is that once you're improvising or composing, uh, you really have to have all these tools available to you like that. And then when you are actually sitting down and figuring out the phrasing for each thing, then you can actually, you know, explore new ways to play it and uh, maybe give it a little different uh, sound. But alternate picking is really the one technique that will pretty much get you out of any problem you might face when you are playing. So if uh, you have to play fast, you have to play slow, you have to uh, play some arpeggios, you can still do all of that with alternate picking. Other techniques, they may look a bit more flashy like uh, tapping or sweep picking and we'll have a look at those too. But those are a bit more specific, all right? So it will be harder to make those the main focus of your playing. So alternate picking is really the one technique that you really have to work on. And so today we're going to look at that and we're going to start with the mechanics of the picking hand and we'll take it from there. All right, so the first thing we have to learn is uh, how to hold the pick. Holding the pick with, uh, obviously, if you are a regular guitar player, uh, with the right hand. And the main thing is actually how, how you hold it in a way that allows you the most sensibility and uh, proficiency with, you know, with the picking hand. If you already have a technique that you figured out, I mean, this is something very personal, so I, I wouldn't tell you to change it. And there's a lot of great guitar players who hold the pick in all kinds of different ways. But uh, if you're having problems, you know, uh, speed, coordination, you know, that kind of stuff, then I would suggest try this out, and if it works better than what you're doing, then do it. So the best way to hold the pick, probably, is to make a hook with your index finger, and then just place the pick on top and close it with a thumb. So you, it will look something like this. Now if you see from this angle, the just a little tiny bit of plastic protruding from, from my finger. That means that I can just hold the pick to the string and move it, and it won't go anywhere, it won't budge. And also this way, I don't have to actually press down on my fingers like this. I don't have to do this. Um, if I have the pick coming out all the way, then I have to really press hard not to have this wobble here. All right? So hold it like this, and then just put your fingers together very gently. You don't need to actually press down on them. All right? So once we move this position, this form, to the string, all we have to do is generate just a tiny bit of movement from the wrist just enough to carry us from right above the string to right above below it, uh, to right below it, sorry. And then from right below it to above. Okay, we're gonna have close-ups later for this, but as you can see, I'm just barely moving my wrist. So I'm really uh, taking advantage of all the movement I'm creating. Okay, so that's really the idea. Uh, just a tiny bit of movement here translates to a bit bigger movement here, but just a couple millimeters above the string, below the string. And it's called alternate picking because what we're doing is always go down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, and now I'm going to show you an exercise you can use to get better at this. The best way to go about this is to actually start with just one hand, the picking hand, and then try to coordinated with the left hand. So um, now you know how to hold the pick. So all you have to do now is kind of learn the mechanics of actually playing the string. And the best way to do it is to actually isolate this hand completely, forget about this one. So we're going to play open strings all the way through. And we're going to start playing on the third string, then the fourth string, second, fifth, first, and sixth. Now this will be separate exercises. You don't have to worry about how you go from one string to the next yet. All you have to do is get used to the fact that each string will have a different feel uh, because they're thicker or they're lighter, or because they're towards the end of the guitar, they're towards the top. So, you know, your whole uh, coordination and, you know, with your body will kind of change in relation to where your hand is. Okay, so for now, all you have to do is just take the third string and play open string, like this. And all you have to do is remember that when you actually play the string, the wrist is actually doing the movement. There's nothing, you know, you don't do any of this. You don't actually move the fingers, you just hold them, and just let the wrist go down 
and then up, down and up. Very simple. And now with time, you try to limit the amount of movement you actually need to play the string. So you should be able to go from right above the string to right below the string. Okay, so don't try not to do this. Once you play the string, there's no need to carry on with the movement all the way here and here. Okay, just very small. Now you're gonna do this uh, in this order. You're gonna do the third string, the fourth, second, fifth, first, and sixth, from easy to hard. Now the sixth string might be a bit trickier because you, you'll find that you have no room to play. If you play in the same position, you'll be muting the string. So just rest the, the hand on the guitar and play as usual. Okay, so very simple. Just make sure the string goes through here so you don't mute it with this part of the hand. Um, nothing else. Well, one thing you should try to focus on also is when you switch from one string to the next, always try to play in the same spot. So whatever seems easy to you on the third string, try to keep it. All right. So for me, it's right uh, underneath the, the first pickup, right behind it. So if I'm doing this exercise, I'll just do it for all the strings in the same spot. Okay. So we're going to see from close up now so you get a good feel for it. Okay, so now that we've seen how we do it from close up, we're going to actually have a look at all the possible permutations of uh, these fingerings. So, uh, one, two, three, four really only means the fingers. You can do it anywhere you want on the neck. So, the fret five is actually very good because it's a, kind of a comfortable position for your left hand and your arm. You know, sometimes people, depending on the guitar you have, the neck might be all the way out here. So, the first fret might be a bit uncomfortable. So, you can do it here. Uh, if you have small hands or maybe you are tired, you can do it all the way, you know, uh, higher up on the neck, maybe on the ninth fret, from 9 to 12 or 7, you know, whatever works for you, 5 is a good place. So when you see on the table 1, 2, 3, 4, that's just the fingers, all right? So in this case, we'll have to be like 5, 6, 7, 8, all right? And as we said before, you find all kinds of combinations, there's 24 of them, and the focus of each group of 6 will be on a separate fingers. And uh, what else should you know? Well, one thing you have to keep in mind is that you should be light on the strings, okay? So when you play one combination, let's do five, seven, six, eight. As soon as I play one of the frets, I can just move on to the next one, all right? I don't try to hold the fingers down. 
I just do it like this. Okay, very light and no rush. You know, do it very slow and just use it to warm up and to get to know your fingers and your hand. So hopefully this worked out for you and now we're going to add just a little bit more difficulty to it. So now we're going to do it ascending and descending at the same time. So we're going to play 5, 6, 8, 6. So we're coming all the way up and all the way back. Okay, you might not notice the difficulty here on 5, 6, 8, but when we switch to the next uh, combination, which is 5, 7, 8, like this, you see that it becomes increasingly harder as you progress with speeds. By the way, now use the table for the metronome, use the one with four notes per beat. And when you do this, if you, if you, you know, examine this, you're playing five, seven, eight, seven, so out of four notes, you're playing three notes with the weak fingers, which, you know, they're weak now, but you, as you progress, they'll become just as strong and just as under your control as any other one. But this is definitely harder. And now opening the hand, Okay, you'll find that going fast here, it gets more and more difficult. Uh, you won't notice it when you play like 70 or 80 beats per minute. But as you go up, you go up and you go up, and you just see that unless you're completely coordinated, you won't be able to pass a certain speed. So just a little bit of advice here. If you get to a speed where you just can't play anymore, go back about 20 uh, points on the metronome and play there. Now, you should be able to catch whatever doesn't allow you to play faster, but at a previous stage, right? So if you have a problem with, for example, tension on the ring finger, you might not have noticed it because these things kind of creep in, you know, maybe at 80 you play fine, at 85 it's there but you don't feel it, 90 you're so concerned about actually playing at 90 that you don't pay attention. So you get to 100 and you're like, wow, I can't, I can't play this, you know, and the reason is that whatever problem you have at 100, you already had way before then. And if you catch it early, you might be able to fix it. So whenever you reach a a ceiling that you can't, you can't overcome, just go about 20 or 30 BPMs below and keep an eye out for whatever you are feeling at say 120, you should be able to spot it at 80 or 90. So fix it then and then try to go up again.
so I have one more exercise for you using these combinations. Last one, I promise. And this will actually add to the difficulty of it. And also we'll try to get into a bit more of the nuances of your playing because by now I hope if you've worked on your previous exercises you'll be kind of familiar and comfortable with the big things which is not playing you know with large movements on the pick and also trying to really coordinate both hands so they land at the same time. So uh, what we do now is try to give more focus to the little finger but and that, that way we can try to switch your attention to the rest of the hand again in an in attempt to even out all your fingers so that at the same uh, level of control. So we'll do uh, figures of four now, and we'll do five eight, six eight. So we always go back to the little finger. Like that. Then when we uh, apply it to the, to the second uh, combination, we're gonna do five eight, seven eight. This is the one that most people find the most difficult, so take your time with that one. And then we'll do it to the open position, which is 5 9 7 9. Okay, very simple. And one thing you should try to focus on now that you've uh, already achieved the, you know, the, the big things is uh, the details. And one very important detail is that you try to not lift these fingers a lot once you play them, alright? So try not to do this or with this exercise. Okay, because again, we are adding to the possibility that you'll, you won't get there on time, you know? So, try to just hover over the string as close as possible to it, and then just lower the finger when it's time to play. Okay, so really discreet and very small. So from the outside, it should almost look as if you're not playing at all. So this brings us to the conclusion of our spotlight on just, uh, you know, one string. And we're going to try actually now to move it in a more realistic way, which means we're going to go from one string to the next, and uh, because that's usually what we'll do when you play and when you improvise. Uh, there's two rules here. One is that no matter if you change strings or not, you always keep alternating. So let's say, for example, I'm playing a scale and I'm playing um, A, B, C on this, on this string. So my picking hand will go down, up, down. And when I move to the next string, I have to go up again. So I'll keep alternating. It doesn't matter if I change strings or not. I will still alternate. So it's down, up, down, up on the next string. Now it's down, up, but then I'll go down on the next string. So it really doesn't matter what you're doing with this hand and if you're changing strings or not. The whole point of alternate picking is that you keep alternating. So you just start a movement and you just carry it through the strings. And the next thing is how you actually change from one string to the next. So you can go back to your open string exercise, just playing zero, 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 all the way through. And this time you start from either one of the strings, let's say the first one, and you play. And you keep moving up, and then down. And if you notice here what I'm doing, I'm always following the same line. So I don't change strings in a diagonal movement. This will change many things. We'll, if you use the wrist, you'll change the angle of the pick. So this string will sound like this, with a good full tone, and this one will sound 
you know, thin and crappy, so you don't want to do that. So always keep the same angle of the pick. And also, you want to hit the string at the same spot because the strings also change in uh, tone depending on whether you play them here, 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 you know, and if you wanted to play them here. You know, they sound smoother and basser as you move uh, towards the fretboard. So how you do it is just keep an eye on wherever is good to play for you. For me, it's right behind the first pickup. And hold that line. The way you do it is just simply moving the, the, the hand, the, the whole arm, sorry. The hand moves on one string, but the arm carries the hand to whatever string you need. Okay, so if I'm doing it with the open strings, See, it's, it's, actually the, the, it's actually the whole arm that carries me from one string to the next. Okay, so go back to the first exercise with the open strings and do it this time, play maybe four times each string and then move up and down. So now it's time to move on and uh, to actually apply this to something that sounds a bit more like music. And we're going to do it by using a tiny bit of a major scale. So we're just going to play one octave. And all you have to do is uh, start on the fifth fret of the third string and we go C, D, it's 5 and 7. Then on the next string we do 5, 6, 8. That's E, F, G. And then on the next string A, B, C which is 5, 7, 8. So, you know, we're using the same combinations that we worked on individually, now we're mixing them up. And also this uh, brings us to a good point, which is, should you practice with a clean tone or with distortion? Uh, you should practice with both. The clean tone allows you to really focus on uh, that you produce the same exact tone and sound for each string. Okay, distortion brings in uh, Compression, so compression will tend to make your lower volume notes, the ones you don't hit so well, sound pretty much the same as the other ones. And so for precision, that might not be the best idea, but it's also true that if you play with, always with distortion, if you're, if you're in a hard rock or a heavy metal band and you play with distortion all the time, you have to understand you know, the nature of the beast. You can't just go out there and you practice clean all the time and then you go live and you make a bunch of squeaky noises and uh, you really don't control the, the distortion. So, uh, you know, try both. And distortion will allow you also to control one thing, which is unwanted noise. So if you don't play properly, you start sounding like this. Right? So nobody wants to play like that. So distortion and also these kind of noises, when you play clean, you might be a bit sloppy. You can hear a bit of noise back there, but you don't really notice it unless you're really looking for it. So the best way to understand that is to just you know, hit your distortion pedal or your change your channel on the amp and try to play with a clean sound and an even sound with a distortion. Now, nothing, uh, you know, will uh, prevent you from playing with distortion and imagining it you're playing uh, with a clean tone. So you'll still try to get every note to sound exactly the same without the help of the, of the actual uh, distortion and compression. But at the same time, you'll be able to control all these other weird and unpredictable things that distortion brings about. And it's also a lot more fun to play with distortion sometimes if you like hard rock. So go ahead and do it. And this exercise again is just a little scale. We go up and we come back down. The main thing here is keep using alternate picking and try to move this hand as little as possible and this one too. And I'm going to show this one to you from close up so you can have a better look. Well, well, now we have uh, used um, the patterns in a more uh, musical way. So now we're going to add one more degree of difficulty, which is using patterns that are not linear. Linear means we're just going from beginning to end, like we did before. So this is linear. 
Now we're going to alternate and we're going to do groups of four. So we're going to play the first four notes, then the next four notes, and then the next four. Like that. And we have a lot more about this when we do major scales, but for now, you can do it on the first octave. So we play C, D, E, F. Then we go back to D and play four more. D, E, F, G. And then from E, E, F, G, A, and so on. Um, the main problem here, well, usually you won't be able to play as fast when you play co intricate things like this as compared to when you play linear uh, parts. So don't try, you know, don't do it. Just play slow enough that you can actually control. the technique. All right, so when you go all the way up to the 8th fret of the first string, we work our way back down. Okay, so throughout what you do is try to move this, this hand as little as possible and the picking hand as well. You also see, uh, now that we're doing this, is that you'll always constantly be moving from one string to the next and then back and then again in one direction then in the other. When you play linearly it's really a matter of just working your way down the strings or up. Now if you see the pick it's kind of jumping around the strings so this will uh, even more you know it will refine your control of how much you move to generate one note. As always just move as little as possible. Okay, just a little as possible. And this again, I'm gonna show it to you from close up because it has quite a few things you might want to look at. So here it comes. So speed is one more thing you have to practice when you do alternate picking. It's the, one of the most conducive techniques to playing fast, especially on some, you know, in, on some kinds of uh, combinations and patterns. Usually when you want to improve anything you want to do on the guitar, you have to kind of focus on that one aspect. So if you want to learn how to play fast, just do it in a way that uh, is conducive to it. So that don't get lost in intricate patterns or, change, or, or changes of strings all that kind of stuff. Just do it on one string, a simple pattern you're comfortable with, and try to focus on the principle of playing fast. Now the principle of playing fast is that you can control how fast you produce a note. When you actually pick the string, it just takes that long to pick it. So as long as your finger is on the, in the right spot, the actual act of producing the note and setting the strings uh, to vibrate is just the same for everyone. You might be a total beginner and I can be a more advanced player, but we produce the, the note at exactly the same speed. So what we do to improve speed is to limit the amount of time that goes between one note and the next. So with the picking hand, we saw how important that is when we try to not let the pick travel too far. So we go down and up really close to the string. And again, on all the close-ups from this video, you'll be able to see it, that I don't go like that. I just try to stick as close as possible to the string. And with this hand, we come back again to the fact that you don't want to 
play like this. So you hold the, the, the fingers as close as possible to the fretboard and be as relaxed as possible, because that's key to playing fast. OK, so this exercise, again, is uh, based on a very simple pattern. We're going to play a group of four notes that goes from 15 on the first string, 13, 12, and 13. So we go down and up. And then we do the same thing with the little finger on the 16th fret. Just to add a bit of movement, all right? So we have 15, 13, 12, 13, 16, 13, 12, 13. And we just combine them. And so as we go with the metronome, we start very slow, we go up and up and up. What we do and we try to do is limit the amount of time that it takes us to go from one note to the next, to the next, to the next. Okay? So it sounds something like this. I'm going to go from very slow to a bit faster. So you see the technique doesn't change at all. It's the same technique. And I'm just trying to do it in a way that it creates the least amount of interval between one note and the next. OK, so this brings me to one more tip, actually. Uh, when you play slow, imagine that you're playing fast. OK, so that w won't allow you to be all sloppy about it, because you know that if you're playing slow enough, you can do anything. Right, so just imagine that you're like a recording of somebody already playing fast, and they're playing it back slow. So the technique is proper, but it sounds slow. All right, so when you go up in speed, you're actually keeping the same technique. I'm going to show this to you from close-up. So now you figured out how to play fast, you figured out how to play clean, you figured out how to control some more intricate patterns with the, with the strings and the, and the fingers. So now we're going to put it all together, if we can, and uh, do this long run. Uh, it's based on the harmonic minor scale, which is a scale that when you start out playing is great because a lot of really you know, fast guitar players have used it, especially in the 80s with all the shred thing. And it's a good way to start and to do exercise out of it. And so this one is called the A minor harmonic scale. So what we're doing now is use a scale that goes like this. Now the good thing about this is we're actually covering a good chunk of the fretboard and we're using all the strings. But we're not going to keep it that simple. We're actually going to try to create a little pattern. Okay, so the, the whole thing will go something like this. So don't worry if it's too fast, you're going to do it much slower than that. And you can see that we're changing strings. We're going forward and backwards. And also we're doing slides. Uh, we'll talk about slides later on. But for now, just, you know, move your finger to the, you'll see it from the close-up and on the tablature where you actually need to have it. But when you do it, whenever it, it's necessary to do it, don't do this. OK, make it transparent. Okay, you see you're not here in the actual slide. And the reason is that alternate picking is really all about uh, really precise and kind of mechanical sounding, tak -a -tak -a -tak, like that, like a machine gun. So this will kind of detract from it. So let's try to do it. The, the technique is there, but you don't hear it, okay, which is also a sign of good technique when it's transparent. So I'm going to play to you now just a bit faster than I'm going to do from the close-up. So you can see the progression. So I'm going from slow to medium to just a little bit fast. And you can see that the, hopefully the technique stays the same and it's clean and this hand does exactly the same thing at all speeds. <laughs> Right, so you see it's really the same thing all over. You just do it faster. Again, limit the amount of time it takes you to go from one note to the next, and you'll be all set. We're going to check this out from close up now so you can see all the mechanics of it.
So one more use we have for alternate picking is to actually use it to play arpeggios. Now we're going to look at arpeggios a lot with uh, a sweep picking session. But sometimes you don't want that smooth sound that the sweep picking gives to arpeggios, you know, when you play all down strokes and all up strokes. You want to have definition in each note. And though you can achieve it with uh, sweep picking, it's a lot easier to give definition to something when you're playing alternate picking. And so we're going to try now a little sequence of arpeggios and uh, you'll find a tab for it. So we won't go into really close-up detail because it's really the same thing. We will do, we'll move these fingers in a way that's as conducive as possible to playing economically. And then we'll use the pick also in the same way we used it for changing strings. And we're gonna take an F uh, major scale and we're just gonna play the major and minor triads of the scale. So we'll play F major here. And we'll play G minor. We'll play A minor. Uh, B flat major, C major, we'll play D minor, E diminished, and then again F major. And we're going to do it by playing again, regardless of whether we change string or not, we keep alternating. So in the case of any arpeggio, let's take the first one. We play uh, the third string, I'm mean, sorry, the third fret on the fourth string with a downstroke. But then when we reach the next string, which is the second fret on the third, we go up. And then down again on the one. And then up. Okay, and it's always alternating down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And it looks something like this. Very simple, and uh, the reason it's hard sometimes to play like this is because we are not used to playing this kind of shapes with alternate picking. So all you have to do is just repeat it, repeat it a while, and it will get into your fingers, and it will be a very useful technique. And so give it a try, and we're going to have one more exercise that's an excerpt from uh, a song, and it's going to be a bit crazy with the alternate picking, so you're going to love it. <laughs> Very well, so what you just heard there is a, a little excerpt from a piece that I adapted for electric guitar for my first EP, which was called Lords of Time, a long time ago, and uh, it was really just a way to introduce something classical, you know, played with, uh, with electric guitar. And it was a fun song, and it's great for alternate picking because it's really, it, it kind of involves everything we talked about today. It involves uh, playing fast on one string for some sections, it involves more intricate patterns, it also involves a certain speed that you have to play this at, whereas you'd really need to get your hands in order, you know, so you won't be able to, to do this sloppily and also this hand will have to move as little as possible. So everything we explained today, you can just work on it and eventually you should be able to play this at the speed you just heard without any problems. But we're going to go over it now uh, bit by bit, you know, in a very simple way. I won't play as fast and also we're going to see it from close up very slow. So you should have all the details you need to tackle it. Okay, so it begins with uh, a short intro to the, to the excerpt, which I just, it, it doesn't really apply to alternate picking at all, but I just, uh, for completion, I left it in. And it's something like this. So you can see that in the, on the tab, it's very easy. And now begins the part where alternate picking really comes in. And the first part is this, um, this pattern. So you notice it's very similar to what we did before, but this time it has a little trick. So you do the first time down and up and down, twice, three times, but the fourth time you change the pattern. So that's something that your hands, you'll, you'll, you'll notice it if you haven't yet, that your hands love patterns. Uh, actually our brains love patterns and that's how we work and we function. But with guitar it, being an expressive instrument, patterns become usually boring and disconnected from your audience. So it's very important that your technique allows you to switch directions and change patterns uh, as often as you like. So this is a great way to improve it. Isolate this part and you break the pattern, okay? And you can play fast like this and still keep that technique, then you're on your way to mastering alternate picking. From here we go um, 
we have this little section, you can see it on the tab, and then we move to the next string, and we have a longer string of, of uh, alternate picking section. And it goes like this. You can see we're using this, these two patterns from before. And again, we create a certain expectation by using the same thing three times. But the fourth time, we reverse it. Yeah, and then we move down to frets. Okay, so it becomes a matter of really just focusing and uh, really controlling your fingers. So a bit faster, it sounds like this and all at the same time. Uh, yeah. Like that, yeah? So, and finally, we go up to the fourth string and we have a little run that involves three strings and uh, it's probably the most difficult part and it goes something like this. Okay, so again, we saw earlier the need sometimes to slide your hand. So we slide with the little finger. Again, as transparent as possible, don't do this. Right, we don't want to hear that. And then one more thing that you'll find often if you improvise freely is that sometimes, you know, what you want to play is not designed to make you feel comfortable, right? So in this case, I have to move from this group of notes to this one. And at this point, what you have to do is close your hand, you know, really just smash your fingers together and then open it up. And then you will be in the new position. Oh, wrong note there. Like that. You see all this from close up. As a matter of fact, why don't we go straight to it and uh, we'll check it out. so you reached the end of this workshop congratulations and hopefully everything made sense and also keep in mind that everything we do in these videos will be it's cross-referenced so if there's anything that is not quite clear to you now it will become you know by the time you reach the end of these videos and you can always go back and re-watch them and uh, you know reference one video with the next and so on so don't worry about it too much and um, again we saw Every, you know, alternate picking from the very beginning, so be before you do anything more complex, just really try to focus on this hand, open strings, then move on to adding this hand, then more, more complicated and intricate patterns, and then you can actually improve your speed with those single string exercises, and if you can, by the end of the video, try to tackle the, the Chardas by Monty, which is a great piece to test your alternate picking. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you for the next video very soon. Bye-bye.